Did you guys ever lose a fish before? And I don't mean uh, that it dies. I mean that you look in your aquarium and your fish isn't there anymore. Maybe it was a shrimp uh, or a snail or some small fish that literally disappears from your aquarium only to appear outside the tank. Or maybe you find it uh, weeks or even days later. Perhaps it was just hiding. You simply couldn't find it. Some people even end up with their fish in their filtration, believe it or not. But you ever hear of somebody losing a freshwater stingray? Well, I did just last night. Let me explain. You see, every night before I go to bed, I check on all of my aquariums, just like normal people do. However, I have this thing about me that I also count the fish that are in the aquarium. Of course, just the ones that are actually countable. So for the wall room tank, I just do a visual, making sure that I still have 10 in there and making sure their appearances are fine, filtration pumps all running before I go to bed. And of course, I also stop by the 2000 gallon aquarium and I count the arowana, one, two, three, four. I count the freshwater stingrays as well, one, two, three, four. And then I head over to Frank's aquarium and I see the Beicher and Frank are doing fine. I then proceed to count all of Frank's chins, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But didn't I mention that I had four stingrays? I thought I had five. I do. You see, I actually have five freshwater stingrays in this aquarium. I've got three black diamond stingrays as well as two pearl stingrays and of course the four Asian arowana. However, last night I only counted four rays. One of the black diamonds was missing. Of course, these are stingrays. They're going to hide wherever they want to hide, whenever they want to hide. It's not very typical for a healthy ray to want to hide. They typically only do that when they're upset or they're scared or hiding or whatever the case might be. Usually rays are always out in the open. With that said, I thought, well, maybe he's just hiding in the sand somewhere. But rays are not really all that great of a hider to begin with. You see, they'll always have their eyes above the sand as well as their spiracles. Now their spiracles are right behind their eyes and it's essentially another organ that allows them to still pass water through their gills which are located underneath of them while they're buried in the sand. So of course they can still breathe. So I'm looking for a pair of eyes or some spiracles or anything that indicates there's a ray still in there. Now of course common sense states that a fish just isn't going to get up and leave, of course, unless it's something like a snakehead that can survive on land as well as water in order to travel to different waterways if it needs to. Stingrays simply don't do that. So it has to be in the aquarium or at least close to it. So of course I thought, you know, he's got to be in there somewhere. I'm going to bed, but I'm not going to be able to sleep knowing that I haven't been able to count all five stingrays. So I have to get a visual confirmation that this ray is still in this aquarium before I do anything else. Mind you, it's about one o'clock in the morning at this point. So I decide what my next step is going to be is to simply remove all of the lids or at least push them back and use my, my scrubber that I typically use to clean this minus the actual sponge on it. And I'm just gonna go through the sand at the bottom lightly just kind of move it through it, see if I can get him to come out of the sand. I searched this entire aquarium. Nothing turned up. So of course you'll also see that underneath the roots of this aqua decor background, you can see that, well, the rays can actually go under it. So I sat here with a flashlight for about 35 minutes or so, just peering under all of these roots, hoping that he's gonna poke his nose out at some point. But alas, he did not. He was nowhere to be found. And to be honest with you, at this point, my heart sunk. He's nowhere in the aquarium. He must be outside of it. So fearing for the worst, I start doing my rounds around the aquarium, thinking I'm going to find this guy just dried up on the floor. I mean, it's probably impossible for him to do so, but you know, the impossible can happen, I guess. The worst case, or the only place that I didn't look, was behind the aquarium. But he wasn't there. Can somebody tell me where my stingray is, please? The background is hollow. So I'm back here with the flashlight looking. I can't see anything. No movement, nothing of the sort. But I'm thinking, well, it's hollow all around it. Like, there's a lot of places that do touch. But there's also going to be places that there's going to be 
uh, grooves underneath of it, probably over there some. I simply can't see everything, so I'll put my GoPro on a pole, tossed it down there with the flashlight, and slowly turned it around, almost like an underwater periscope or reverse periscope. I see nothing. So at this point, I know he's not in the sand, he's not in the aquarium, he's not on the outside of the aquarium, and he's not behind the background. I don't know where else I can look until I think, well, maybe he's just somewhere else that the camera can't see. So I start to look over there. So of course I come over to this side, I move all of the lids aside, and I'm like, how would he get behind this? It's so narrow, but I guess it kind of opens up at the bottom, so I'm trying to peer through with this little flashlight through the cracks. And that's when I see two little eyes peering back at me that I swear were saying something along the lines like, hey dad, look what I can do. This ray was suction cup to the side of the aquarium in the narrowest part of the background. I was like, oh no. First, I look for vital signs. Is he breathing? Is this fish still alive? He was, he was having a great old time. But how do I get back here? This is bolted in place and siliconed. There's nothing I can do really. Well, the only places I actually siliconed were all of the seams, not along the top. If you guys remember along the top, I drilled the background into the acrylic brace. So I removed all of them to peel back the background which caused no damage at all, and I was actually able to get a better look at him. First things first, of course, let's make sure you're not stuck. So I took this long pole, and I kind of agitated around him, seeing if he would move out of the way, which he did. He was freely swimming all around back here. I thought at this point, how am I going to get my smallest big net behind here to scoop him up and take him out without ripping the background off? That's what I thought, well, let me chuck on a thick glove, try to scoot him up to the top, grab him by his tail, uh, and, and lower him back into the tank. Now grabbing him by the tail uh, is really only dangerous to myself. It neutralizes the fish, and the ray's not going to get hurt by doing so. I was only worried about the spine and getting stung, but I thought, it'll be worth it just to save you. And then I chickened out, and we went back to the net idea. I thought, well, if I can just get the net back here, touches the ceiling and everything, if I could just get the net back in there, get it over you, I bet you, you'll swim off of the, the wall and into the net and I could just pull it out vertically and put you back in the aquarium. Of course, this was wishful thinking, but that's actually exactly what ended up happening. And then of course back into the aquarium he went and all was fine. Now I'm actually really glad this happened while I was here and I caught it right away because while I had the GoPro in behind the background, I shut the flashlight off to see if any light was peering uh, from behind the background, like light leaking in through the front that would indicate where uh, perhaps I missed some silicone or, or something along those lines. And I discovered exactly where the stingray got in. Right back in the middle. You see there was a small area, possibly only about, I don't know, seven or eight inches wide that didn't have its silicone uh, attached to it. And it was only a very thin gap there. But rays are being a curious uh, creature and being an elastomal branch, meaning they actually don't have any bones in their body, just hardened cartilage, meaning they're pretty darn flexible, almost like an octopus per se. Not really, but you get the idea. He squeezed in through there and couldn't get back. So what am I going to do about that? Well, I'm going to cram it full of larger rocks and sand and also plant it in there. But in the meantime, because I don't have the plants right now, I got to wait until whatever I want becomes available in the size that I actually want. I jammed a piece of wood right in that center. That's actually a fake aqua decor uh, log as well. Works out perfectly. It's nice and heavy and it's jammed in there tight. So they're not going to be able to get back in there or move around there whatsoever. So again, uh, a potentially terrible situation turned into a discovery of something that 
was something I needed to fix anyway. So I wanted to share this story with you guys for a couple of reasons. One, I like to be an open book and show you everything that happens within my hobby. I don't like to cover things up to appear like I'm some sort of expert. Things happen to me as well. Uh, I'd also like to point out that, you know, this was a great opportunity to, you know, tell you guys just a simple suspenseful story that I think we're all gonna laugh about eventually, especially peering behind that and the little bugger there peeking back up at me pretty funny uh, with that said I'm just happy that I discovered this problem while I was home because this weekend I'm gonna be away at the big fish deal in Maryland I'll leave a link in the description below if any of you guys want to come see me talk I'll be speaking this Friday or tomorrow night Friday night at I think 8 o'clock I'd love to see many of you there and of course if you ever had a fish go missing let me know what happened I love these little stories they're hilarious a lot of the times um, I hear about tiny little fish and shrimp getting caught in canisters, sometimes for months at a time, only to be discovered later. It's always, it's always awesome. Or in the backs of hang on the back filters or in overflows or in a sump or something along those lines. Fish always tend to get caught up in those types of things. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I'd also like to thank you for watching. And if you join me in a couple days, I will have a new video for you.